and welcome back to New Jersey Viewpoint. I'm Ken Rosato. Well, lately we've seen an incredible rise in cyber attacks, and it makes one wonder what should the average person know about these? Is cybersecurity, in fact, getting to be more and more insecure? If you're a victim of a cyber attack, what should you do? Please join me in welcoming Paul Oster, who's a cybersecurity and credit repair expert who is CEO of the firm Better Qualified in Eatontown, New Jersey. Welcome. Good to have you here, Paul. Well, great to be here, Ken. Well, is it just our perception or is cyber attacking on the rise? Oh, it's on the right. I mean, 2014 was the year of the data breach, for sure, and um, it's going to continue to get worse because uh, we're just that much more connected. You know, now everything's online. Recently, I've been talking about smart appliances, mm -hmm. and most people say, what's the big deal if my refrigerator gets hacked? Well, in uh, 2013, 100,000 of those smart appliances were hacked. Wow. Uh, emails were stolen. Passwords were stolen. A and the point there is most people use the same password for their refrigerator or smart appliance as they do for their banking account. Oh, wow. So once they're in, they're in and, and anything that's connected online is just a pathway to our identity. You mean it's bad that I use the password password? Yeah. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> goodbye, one, two, three, four, six, five, four, three, two, one, all of those things. Or, or not changing your pins and passwords. Mm -hmm. We've almost become numb. We, we joke about it, right? Another data breach, a million, ten million, a billion, who cares? It, I feel okay didn't hurt me so I don't change my pins and passwords the problem there is you know at better qualified we see this all the time mm -hmm. and we deal with the aftermath the victims and victims of identity theft if you could talk to one you would know you would do something proactively to make sure you never become one it's just and I'm sure I can I'm speaking on behalf of 90 percent of the people if I could be so bold <laughs> to say this it's a pain in the neck because we have so many passwords. Am I? You know I'm right. For everything to get into your work computer, get into your home computer, to change every program, every credit card, every bank. You got ten thousand passwords. You yep. forget about it. You want to it email is. you a new password? Yes, I email you. Then you forget it. Next day you're back. I'm, I'm ranting because I'm right. So it becomes so annoying. Yeah. And you got to do it because of these morons who sit in the pajamas in their grandmother's basement and they sit there trying to hack into your credit card. It is annoying and it's a pain in the neck, but again, identity theft is a pain in the neck, your stomach, your chest, your legs. If you're a victim of identity theft, it is, it's devastating. So I know it's inconvenient. People say to me all the time, if I have to change my account number, Paul, I have stuff that's on auto pay and I have to call the creditor. Okay. Is it going to take you 10 minutes? The average person is dealing with the effects of identity theft years after they're a victim. How often do you recommend that we change our pins and our passwords? <laughs> this is As where I, I become the most unpopular guy in the room. It's at least every 30 days. So you're telling me I should walk off the set right now? We might want to take a commercial break. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> That's crazy. But all right. So, but here's my question. If it's so darn easy for these hackers to hack in, then what really are you telling Then if they could hack into my current password, then what? What is changing it going to do? If they can well, hack into this, why can't they hack into so that? Th that's great. The perception is that it is easy. So the data breaches happen. That doesn't mean they have access into your accounts. They, they can get to your accounts. And it's, if you think about the days of when guys used to walk through the parking lots just checking car doors, what, door, what car do they get into? The one, the one that's, that's unlocked. Right. So if you haven't changed your pins and passwords, if your password is still password or hello, you're the account that they're going to take over. So they have the sophisticated softwares that run these algorithms to try and figure out even if you have a difficult password. But at the end of the day, the easier you make it for them, the easier, the more uh, likely you're going to become a victim. And again, this is where I become the most unpopular guy in the room. It's our fault that identity theft is one of the fastest growing crimes in the country. And it's going to continue to be that way until we, as consumers, do something about it. We, we lock our front doors, we lock our cars, we lock our phones. We do very little to lock our identities. And there's, there's no such thing as identity theft protection because our information, our data, is in 10 million billion places out there over the Internet. But the idea is to secure what you can. All right, let's say... <clears throat> The, sadly, as I say, the inevitable happens. I think we've all had a credit card number stolen or whatever, or bank account violated or whatever. So it happens. What do we do? So you have to make sure that you, you are aware of it. Early detection is the key. Like I just said, there's no such thing as protection. So unfortunately, we live in a day and age where you need to be involved in a credit monitoring program. And 
The FTC gives us all one free look on annualcreditreport.com to check our credit reports. I almost like to say thanks for nothing once a year, really. You know, that's something that should be changed to every 30 days we should have access. But if not, then we have to pay a couple bucks a month to be involved in a credit monitoring program. If you see red flags or you're, you know that you've become a victim of identity theft, put a security freeze on your credit reports. Um, no one can access those reports if you put a security freeze without lifting a PIN or a password first. Mm -hmm. So that will protect you against uh, people opening up new lines of credit. Putting a security freeze on your credit reports does not protect you against true name identity theft. And this is a really devastating part of uh, this crime. This is where someone assumes your ID. Mm. They could get a job under your name. Why would they want to do that? Maybe they're a felon, an ex-convict. Maybe they're a, a child predator. Maybe they want to get a driver's license because they're on their fourth DWI. And to do all those things, they don't need access to your credit reports. So you really have to monitor all of your accounts, check everything on a regular basis, or you have to deal with the consequences. Lovely. Uh, you know, there are so, so many of these uh, new security cams that work on a Wi-Fi in the house today. Yep. And uh, one of my neighbors uh, told me that uh, they found themselves on one of this, the, it was in Russia, one of these Russian sites where their Wi-Fi, uh, IS, uh, I, whatever it is. Yep, absolutely. Would, so that's also something. Be Baby careful. Baby monitors. Make sure that you have that locked and change the idea in that. We're out of time, but I just want to give that, put that out there. So if you have your... Scary. Okay. We're out of time. I want to thank you so much, Paul Oster, for being here. Good luck with that. Good luck, everybody. I'm Ken Rosado. We thank you for joining us. With all of that, enjoy the rest of your weekend.